The other day, I was sent a hearing aid to review. It's called the Nearity HearPod Air. And what's unusual is that you wear it round your neck. Like this. Now, honestly, I think it looks absolutely dreadful. But if they're the revolution the manufacturers claim, and it means I can hear people, well, I might just be able to put up with that. So let's find out whether these work. Hearing loss is probably my least favourite middle-aged condition. It's not so much of a problem at home or outdoors, but the moment you're in a room with more than four or five people talking, it gets harder and harder to hear what they're saying. So you start trying to lip read. And that's slightly embarrassing because when you're standing close to someone and staring at their lips, you're conscious of the fact that back in the day, the only reason for staring at someone's mouth so fixedly was to make sure you didn't miss it. For some years, I've been trying to find a solution, something which is discreet, which helps pick out the sound of a voice across a crowded bar, and which doesn't cost the same as the national debt of Argentina. On this channel, I've reviewed the ridiculous flare mini ear trumpets, which just make you look a little bit ridiculous, and the Olive Pro hearing aids, which didn't work, and not to mention the Serotone Core Ones, which were billed as the world's smallest over-the-counter hearing aids, but which didn't do anything other than whistle at you all day long. So when Nearity got in touch and asked me to review its HearPod hearing aids, I thought, yeah, bring them on. Now, the first thing that caught my eye was the blurb on Amazon. Why is it that products for older people are always promoted with photographs of unfeasibly happy looking old people? I mean, look at this shot of what I presume is a mother and daughter out for a carefree stroll by the sea. In real life, they would never be looking at each other in that happy, carefree sort of a way, because in this shot, mum has just had a small moment of urinary incontinence. And this man, clearly he's been out walking for a while. In real life, he wouldn't be smiling at his wife like that either. In real life, he's got a prostate the size of Birmingham and he'd be screaming at his wife, where's the bloody loo? And what about this photograph? In real life, this woman has just come out from hospital after a hip replacement and she's still on a bit too much tramadol. So while she might be smiling, in real life, she'd have much more of a glazed look about her. And I can't for the life of me think what this man has to be smiling about. He's watching television with his granddaughter, but he's as deaf as a doorknob. And I'll bet he has cataracts too. So although he's doing a pretty good bluff with the remote control, he's just guessing where the television is. So come on, Nearity, why don't you lead the charge in using more accurate representations of old people who are, without exception, in pain, anxious, frustrated or angry? The other thing that immediately caught my eye about Nearity's marketing materials is how they illustrated that their product is so much better looking than an ungainly hearing aid. Which is sort of true, but they have set the bar quite low here. I don't know anyone in the UK who would wear a hearing aid the size of a cricket bat. Even my free NHS ones are a fraction of the size of those bad boys. But I guess if you're marketing a hearing aid that's so big you have to wear it round your neck, you're going to have to fish pretty close to the bottom of the barrel of your competitors. That, of course, is the first thing you notice about the Nerity hearing aids. The earpieces themselves are pretty big, but even more noticeably, they're connected by wires to this strange-looking neckband. Now, when Nerity first showed me these things, I presumed the reason for the neckband was to hold a directional microphone, which would pick up the voice of the person talking to you far better than normal hearing aids, where the microphone is housed in the part of the hearing aid that sits behind your ear. But no, it turns out that the neckband just houses the battery and controls the power and the volume. So given that my normal hearing aids last all day and I can control them with a switch behind the ear, I'm struggling to understand what this neckband brings to the party. Nearity says that one benefit is that it means your earpieces are always connected to your head so you won't lose them. Sort of like those chains that some people put on their reading glasses. I must say, I don't buy that one. I put my normal hearing aids on in the morning and they just sit there all day. They don't fall off, they don't blow off in a strong wind, so I just don't need to attach them to my head with a cord. 
So there we go. I think this neckband is a bit pointless, and I think it looks kind of weird, and it draws attention to my disability. Why would I want to do that? Still, being unable to hear what people are saying is the most isolating thing, especially when you've spent your whole life riffing off your friends. And if this thing works, well, I wouldn't care if it meant I had to go to the pub wearing a headpiece like Darth Bloody Vader. Now, the first thing you're going to notice when you pop these things in your ears is that they are what are called closed dome, which is to say that they completely block the ear canal, stopping normal sounds from entering your ears, but also stopping sound waves created inside your head from leaving your ears. Now that's okay if your hearing is buggered across all frequencies, but if, like me, you've lost only the high frequencies, it means your own voice is going to sound distractingly amplified. And whatever you do, for Christ's sake, don't go near a stick of celery. Anyway, let's see how well these things improve my hearing. Could it be by enough to make me want to wear them, despite this neckband and the closed domes? Well, to test them out, first of all, I'm going to listen to some music. And here we go. A little bit of Chris Rear. Now, I'm not wearing any hearing aids at the moment. And well, the best way I can describe it to somebody who doesn't have hearing loss is that it's a bit like listening to music through two thick pairs of skiing socks, a blanket, a dustbin bag, and a ski boot. It's muffled. So let's see what happens when I put on my normal hearing aids, which are called Phonak Lumities. Oh, that's so much better. It's restored the missing trebles. And it's kind of as I imagine my hearing was maybe 20, 30 years ago. So let's see how the Nearity Hear Pods compare. Gosh, that's surprisingly good, actually. I wasn't expecting that. It does sound a bit scratchier. And there's a sort of almost a ringing on some of the notes that isn't very pleasant. But, you know, I'm splitting hairs a bit here. It's really not bad, particularly when you consider that the, uh, the Phonax cost two and a half grand and this cost 200 quid. So now I'm going to see, uh, at the moment they're set on the lowest volume and I'm just going to turn them up and see what happens. Well, I'll say I'm going to... Oh, here we go. The buttons are a bit... They don't always work. Oh! Oh, my God. No, that... That's awful. That's for somebody a lot deafer than me. So there we go. That's a surprise. That, um... <clears throat> they're, they're much closer to the Phonax than I was expecting, actually. Um, but it is quite an easy test listening to music. The real litmus test for any hearing aid is how well it helps you hear dialogue, other people speaking, and particularly the television. So now I'm going to go and watch some telly. The real test of a good hearing aid isn't watching normal television where the dialogue is usually reasonably clear. The real test is watching movies, particularly those with any background noise. I don't know, like helicopter blades or hand grenades or submachine gun fire. So that pretty much covers off most of the films I'd ever watch. And the other problem is, of course, mumbling actors. So for the purposes of this test, I've got a clip here of Idris Elba mumbling away in a film called The Take. And first of all, I'm going to listen to it with no hearing aids and see how I get on. No. I'm not getting really any of that. So next, I'll just pop in my normal hearing aids, the Phonak Illumities, and back that up again. They probably gave you a story, probably told you they're the only one you could trust. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting 
pretty much all of that. So, final test, the Nearity HearPod Airs. And I'll just back that up again. That they'll look after you. Gosh. I'm quite surprised. They're really rather good. I, I mean, again, I was getting more than three quarters. I'm mean, getting pretty much all of that now. So that's a surprise result for the hair pods. For the final test, I wore these things down to the village pub for my habitual Friday pint. And let's just say they didn't go entirely unnoticed. Interestingly, nobody actually guessed that these things are hearing aids. One person thought they were music headphones. Another thought maybe I was working as part of a VIP security detail that evening. Another asked if they were for controlling one of my drones. And someone else thought I was moonlighting as a call centre operator. I'll just transfer you now, caller. Please hold. The point is that they all thought I was distracted doing something else. So there we go. These things are a bit of a mixed bag. Sound-wise, they work surprisingly well, especially given that they cost a fraction of my normal hearing aids. Yes, they do sound a bit on the tinny side, a bit scratchy, but that's sort of inevitable with hearing aids, which are, after all, designed to boost the higher frequencies. Also, they're bound to sound a bit tinnier when worn by people with a lower level of high-frequency hearing loss. The bigger problem for anyone who hasn't lost their hearing in the lower frequencies is that they're closed dome hearing aids, which means that they'll amplify the sound of your own voice to a very distracting degree. And I'm just not sure that's something I could ever get used to. But the really big elephant in the room is this neck piece. It's very noticeable. And who wants people to think that they're moonlighting as a call centre operator? At the start, I was asking myself whether these things work well enough for me to put up with that. And the answer is no, not in any social situation. But as a relatively low-cost emergency backup for normal hearing aids, especially for watching TV, yeah, maybe. If you're interested in other things designed to improve your hearing, you might like to watch my review of the Flare Ear HD Mini Hearing Trumpets. Might be good for a laugh, if nothing else. I'll put a link up there or over there somewhere. Otherwise, till the next time, I've been Arlo Guthrie. Bye-bye.